There's something of a debate going on in the economics field right now about whether over the longer term there's a tend to have rates go back down, they were so long, low for so long, or whether there are other factors that will drive them up. Where are you? Oh, I'm definitely in the school that they're going to stay high for as far as the eye can see. I mean, you know, whether it be exactly at the, and I'm talking about the real rate first, whether it's going to stay up at the level it is now, I don't know. Uh, it seems to me, you know, a, a level of the 10 year treasury of 1.52 would seem natural, but it's very hard, hard to, to say. That is a way minority view still in academics. A lot of people are very invested in saying, no, this is temporary. It's going to go away after a while. They did all this work on demographics and productivity. But, you know, if you look at the long run on real interest rates, those factors aren't really very powerful. They don't even always go in the right direction. And what is true is when you have a really big drop like we did after the 2008 financial crisis, you ought to expect most of it to go away. There's a slight downward trend long term, but uh, I've been thinking it would go away for a long time. I have to say now that it's happened, I don't know if I was prescient or a broken <laughs> clock right twice a day, but uh, it seems to me the, the fundamentals really point to having higher interest rates for a long time. Now, going up still really depends on anchoring inflation expectations. Real rates are pretty high now. Ken, unpack some of those fundamentals, if you would, please, because one of the things that we hear from some people are it's going to be, in part, the demand for spending and investment of things like geopolitics, where we're seeing that right now in Israel. Before that, we saw it in Ukraine. Also, some investment when it comes to China. And beyond that, there's the move to climate change, which is going to require a lot of money. Is that part of what, over the longer term, is likely to drive up those rates? Because there's so much of a demand for borrowing. No. Two of the big factors for sure is a belated recognition that you can't keep cutting money on defense forever. And I'm not just talking about the United States, but uh, Europe. And I think defense spending is going to come up 1% to 2% in both the United States and Europe. If the United States has to uh, you know, have conflagrations on two or three fronts or be prepared for that, we uh, unfortunately need to do more. We, you know, It's nice if we didn't. And Europe is way underinvested in defense. Japan, China spending more. That's a factor. And then, David, you mentioned the green transition <laughs> isn't really happening very fast. But I think if you look out a ways, uh, it's going to involve a lot of big investments, a lot of changes. But I think there are other factors. There's populism, certainly. There's a lot more redistribution of income, uh, concern about uh, uh, just the uncertainty from the, uh, n not just the, the geopolitics creating this uncertainty and splitting up the world. Globalization brought rates down. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Bernanke might have overstated it with the global savings glut, but there was something to it. And now that's that's in retreat, if, if only because China is slowing so much. So I think there are a lot of fundamentals pointing to higher real rates. Yeah. As for you know inflation expectations, uh, the Fed's trying to anchor them, but you know it still has a fight ahead.